Welcome to Royal Oak Comics Party, Episode 3. Today our guest is John Tenney. Hey guys. Hi John. How you doing? Pretty good, how are you? Good, thanks for having me on the show, it's very exciting to be here. <laughs> I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> I really, I do mean it. Well, you guys are awesome at what you do, and it's a big honor and a privilege to be on the Royal Oaks Comics Party. Thank Royal you. Oaks? Royal Oak Comics Party. We've mm -hmm. only noticed one oak so far. Okay. But that's okay. Well, I'm glad to be we here. We hope to someday possess more. I am glad to be here. I I was going to you know give up try and make a flowery introduction of you, but I couldn't think of anything that wasn't like utterly sycophantic. I would have <laughs> And I just you those ones. You could have just said you could have just said my friend John Tenney. Uh. <laughs> no. What's wrong with that? I'm not know. your friend. I guess we're acquaintances. I'm just a guest on the show. I get it. We'll take it from there. <laughs> Today. Today. We'll take it from there. But you're like a Go, huge attack style. mentor attack in my style. life. Attack style interview. Go. <laughs> I'm just a guest. I think you've informed how, how my adult life has gone more than almost any other person like outside of my immediate family. That's the type of things that I... <laughs> so, <laughs> You're lower third. Sorry about that. Your sorry about that. Your graphic should have said that. Right? <laughs> has, has informed me more than... That. I appreciate that. That's very nice of you to say. But as far as, like, self, hunting for self-actualization and, like, trying to do the things you truly Have you love? not had a lot of influential people in your life? Is that the why I'm stuck up in here at the top somewhere? No, maybe you were just, you, you got at me when I was young. young. Hey, watch that. <laughs> <laughs> you remember in the back of the bookstore. <laughs> Thanks for having me, guys. <laughs> Hashtag attack style. Right? No, it's awesome. This is actually, like, super incredible. Like, to think about, like, the origins of, like, sitting around at a coffee shop like sketching with a bunch of weirdos and then all of a sudden there's a television show 20 years later like so you used to do the drawing night that mike and i ended up doing over the last several years you were the kind of originator of that at the, was it still at the same place was it the, at the leo's no there was um so w the way it started i was kind of the young kid at the time so in royal oak you just had a bunch of weirdos back in the 80s and everybody was trying to do something artsy and at the, one of the coffee houses, which was called Java Coffee House, you had tons of people sitting around drawing and writing, but they weren't talking to each other. And so I think the only thing that I really brought to it was somehow like joined all the forces together and said, like, you've got a bunch of people writing and you've got a bunch of people drawing. Why don't you make them sit at the same table and have these people come up with ideas and these people will draw them? But we ended up having, there were so many people there, like Matt Fizell from Cynical Man was mm -hmm. there every week. Uh, Sean Barry, who ended up doing all the illustrations for Metro Times. I think he's still the art director over there. Yeah, he's, he showed up at ours one time, too. Yeah. I think we were too, like, crazy. Right. Yeah, it's a different <laughs> time. I mean, everybody got older, you know what I mean? Yeah. And so, well, but, he's doing, like, pro illustration yeah, stuff now. for sure. And then just, like, a ton of people ended up showing up there, and we started doing mini comics and some people were making kind of small scale but larger format comics like eight and a half by 11s folded mm -hmm. and and it was just this really weird time for comics because obviously you guys know like there was this huge uh, kind of earthquake with independent comics in the 90s all of a sudden you had image comics which was like rob liefeld and guys mm -hmm. with 18 abs and muscle <laughs> proportions that didn't make any sense and so all of a sudden it was like well we can make comics that actually have good stories and draw mm -hmm. however we want to draw yeah and so then yeah it was just really cool to be a, a part of that somehow in there i was never a really good artist but i had always loved comic books and i loved writing weird stuff so being able to sit with people and say like a monster with 22 eyes or you know and have someone to draw it out perfectly was always super fascinating to me but your draw i mean your drawings are in here aren't they my drawings are in there, kind your of. Your drawings are really good. <laughs> They're all right. Uh, but I never had a style. My style was always, like, whatever was easiest for me to draw at the time. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I would try and get really elaborate and sketch and 
uh, get all the shading and proportions right. And then sometimes it was like, I'm going to draw a big blob with a thing there, and then that's a man. <laughs> But I never really developed a style because I was always really more interested in in the story. You yeah, have but... kind of a style of like the like almost hairs on a film type. Sometimes like shading and line, like yeah, double lines. I yeah. Don't know. <laughs> uh, the most strangely enough, the most like I ever invested in drawing something was a bunch of friends of mine. We tried to do. Uh, a, a, a comic book which was just um, in detailed sketches of genitalia. <laughs> no one ever saw that one. You guys are very lucky that no like, one ever saw no that. Like, no details or very detailed? Very detailed. I think we have one like that, too. Lots of... I think we didn't bring that one lots to show, of, Lots of vein work. I, lots I, of hair follicles. It had a it was fun very name, gross, like, but Go Wang or something. Or, you had talked about it when you came to the real thing yeah, yeah. party, and we kind of started to draw one. Yeah. I, oh, that's right. We did. Oh, we did yeah. get a little weird oh, drawing. Ten, oh, Tenny. I follow him because of his vein work. <laughs> <laughs> there's some... I've... I should have tried to find them, but there's no way you could show them on this show. Like, they are so That's why we grotesque. didn't bring any of ours, I think. <laughs> there's a... But it was so strange, like, all of a sudden, and the, the kind of confluence that brought everything back around, like, me meeting your sister, and yeah. then all of a sudden there's a comics night again, and, like, it was just all this weird kind of meant-to-be synchronistic universe in action, which I think is really awesome. Yeah, it's really fun, like... There were a ton of people. We met a bunch of people in the area just through doing that. You know, people who we probably never would have met before. Most comics people are, they want to be indoors. Like, right. Like, not with anybody. So For sure. <laughs> having something to draw them out of the cave is kind of cool. And it's weird that, you know, all of a sudden he's back in my life too. Like, meeting him as, like, a weird young kid and talking to him about UFOs and ghosts and conspiracy right. theories. And then you come back around. I stayed pretty centric to Roy, or pretty, uh, you know, Royal you're like, Oakbound. You're, but you're like human Ebola, kind of. Yeah? I, that's how I like to be <laughs> Like, described. you're in my life, and then, like, no, you don't have it. And then, like, years like, later, they're like, oh, no, you got him. That's like, a, that's he's there. <laughs> <Is> that tr- <laughs> I just wanted at some point to call someone human Ebola. Not as a not as I an insult. You just told us not, not as to an make insult. Notes. Not as an insult. As a compliment. Thank you. I mean, I take it as no. I'm not offended by that. I you prefer to be humanable. I mean, you're there. <laughs> you're there. You're a, a, a. Imagine this for me. You're a stable portion of my life. Thank you. Look at that. That's nice. You're not even a stable portion of your life. No, I know. I mean, that's why. I'm, that's why I would go. That's why I think I rode the wave because there was a lot of like, totally fell off the grid from being like crazy depressed, then came back, then like fell off the grid again from like drinking too much, and now I'm like on the upswing again. And right. It's good time. Yeah, for sure. This is my favorite this, swing. That's my personal. This is uh, your favorite swing of yours. Yeah. yeah. No, uh, this whole swing that we're sitting on right now. Oh, good. A lot of people don't realize this is a giant swing. The old porch swing. The old we're porch sitting swing. real still. It's that centrifugal <laughs> thing. Like, we're just... We're locked into the chairs? Yeah. <laughs> 2001 style. Right. Is this where we stare at each other? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. But oh, you... Gosh, I can't do the staring game. You have to put it's one so of your hard. eyes towards Mike and one towards me. Centr- I don't think either one of us can defeat you on our own. Is that kind of working? Things look weird on my angle. Oof, that's got, that hurts my eyes, actually. <laughs> Hold on. I'm just trying. I'm trying to point both of mine at one of yours. This is the art portion, right? Mm-hmm. Where people just watch the stare. Mm-hmm. Abramovich style. Your intensity is too strong. I've got more focused on you than on Kevin. Okay, I'm going to fight Mike now. Oh, gosh. <laughs> if you and I have anything, it's that we will crack each other up instantaneously, and there's never... I'm pretty sure. <laughs> when I watch you two interact on the show, yeah, uh, it's funny watching how you guys react to each other. I like it a lot. Yeah. 
because there's this weird like brotherly tension where I'm never sure if you're going to start laughing at each other or like glare or glare <laughs> or, and a fist is going to come out at some time. <laughs> we were just talking about that the other day. Like when we were in Pittsburgh, we were talking about that's like that's a positive aspect of a relationship is like some kind of competitiveness. Absolutely. I think that's like I think that's, that's a, a good we, part. We handle it all right. I disagree. <laughs> <laughs> Smack. Well, I think we've only been like really pissed at each other like less than three times. I can I can think of a couple. It's way more than no, it wasn't. Really, I don't know. I know there yeah, was like one time so. where I was loaded and said infl- tons of inflammatory things, and then like you were super pissed. Like oh yeah, for a lot. I don't remember what I was saying, but I'm sorry. I don't even think that, <laughs> last, I don't even think that lasted that long. <laughs> That's fine. That's fine. Let's <laughs> stare at each other again. You. <laughs> it's fine. There was a nice moment there for a minute. That was a nice. It was a nice that moment. There was like a real moment. Nice moment. I I can't like accept uh, positive. Any apologies? <laughs> you can't no, accept can't any apologies. Any, like, uh, <laughs> not now. Positive not uh, compliments or anything. The <laughs> straight face. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. Oh, you guys are such good friends. <laughs> it's so nice to see. I uh, feel like we're ignoring you. <laughs> oh, no, I love it. You know, the, the so uh, the sh- TV show that I'm working on right now. Yes, people tell have, about that. Well, it's Ghost Stalkers is the name of the show, but one of the problems that a large majority of people have with the show is that Chad and I interact unlike really aggressive dominant men the fact that like we constantly are listening to each other and hug each other like people are like what's going on in the show you seem like, like nice friends yeah when I watch this people show. hate it people want like oh, no. ripped dudes in black t-shirts could you get a third guy that's like horrible no because you guys are both nice yeah, I don't know. I mean, I I would like to show people being nice. I'm wondering how people are going to feel. Like, there's an episode coming out where I have an anxiety attack while I'm doing my investigation alone. And oh, I pretty God. much have a nervous breakdown on camera. What? And so I wonder how people are going to react to seeing me cry. I have to prepare for the fact that, you know, however many people watch the show, 12, <laughs> like, watching me cry on camera is going to be a weird thing. But that's why I like the, the genuineness of watching you two interact. Because I don't think it gets shown on television. Everybody's acting. Always got some, yeah. Everybody's got a mask up. And I think that people, especially with reality shows, every reality show is actually scripted. Mm-hmm. And so when you're seeing people, like people will say that Chad and I talk very stuntedly to each other. We're not delivering our lines right and that the show is scripted. Because you're not like... Oh, oh, right. The like reality of the situation is blasting it out. I'm not used to talking on camera. I'm used mm-hmm. to talking to someone one on one. Having a camera crew inside of an RV with me during the day, because at night it's a lot easier to do because the camera crew and the sound people rap and it's just us. So we can yeah. just be us. But during the day, when you're trying to have an intense, kind of meaningful, emotional relationship and there's sound guys and a boom mm-hmm. mic over your head, like it does become very unreal and very yeah. un- un- uninteresting I think because the I am stunted. I don't know what to say. So when you're like if when you do the segments where you or he are in the building and the other one is in the truck. Mm-hmm. Is the camera crew anywhere on the they like, have, they're not like following you or anything. Nope, they like have that? to wrap. It's just you guys talking to each other. Yeah, so we each do one night in the location. Uh, we usually go in around 9 at night and then come out at 6 in the morning. But by 9 o'clock, all the sound crew, all the cameramen, all the producers, all the PAs, everybody has to wrap and leave the set. So we have to do all of our camera work for the entire night because there's no one in the building with us. So I'll sit in the RV with a bunch of cameras in the RV filming me from different angles that they'll set up before they leave so they can get shots of me watching the monitor when, when Chad's doing his investigation. But then once we go into the location... Like, if you see me walking down a hallway, it's because I had to pick up a camera, put it at the end of the hallway, walk past the camera, mm. then turn around, go back, and pick that camera up and move it to the next location I'm going to so that you can get multiple shots of and angles of me doing stuff. 
That's actually what Mike and I do on this show. <laughs> Every right. time it cuts to you, I get up and I move the camera. It's amazing watching you guys Mike. work. You're so I know. fast. I know. So fast. It My legs great. are really tired. And then getting back in this exact same position every time. But it's a, it's not something that anybody's ever seen on that type of show. Like, the Kardashians are not doing their own camera work. Right. And someone said to me, uh, oh, it's just something you say. You just say that you're doing your own camera work so that, you know, you can say that you're alone in the buildings. And the only evidence that I can really point to, aside from just being honest about it, is the fact that Chad and I get camera credits at the end of the show. Right. And someone said... Well, you just told the network to give you camera credits. And I said, you don't know how TV works. Right. Because you, to, yeah. you cannot get credits if you're not doing something. Mm -hmm. Like, people fight tooth and nail right. to get a name and a credit for doing something. Right. They're not just going to hand out cameraman credits. Is it on your IMDb now? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. Cool. <laughs> so, I mean, that's, the, like, a real kind of solid piece of evidence that we're shooting half of the show, you know? I believe you. No reason not to. I have no reason to lie. I mean, even if, like, I was, I don't, there wouldn't be a reason to lie. I guess. Maybe there is, somebody could make up on a, a reason. <laughs> but, I mean, you've been doing all that uh, paranormal investigating stuff for a long time. You didn't just get this show out of nowhere. Yeah, it's like closing in on 27 years from when I first got interested in weird stuff. So UFOs, ghosts, Bigfoot conspiracy theories, all of that. And it started from sitting in a coffee house and sitting in a coffee house. And all of a sudden there's an older guy who is talking about the Kennedy assassination. He makes me his little like gopher. And then years later, as I get older, I start finding weird kids and telling them about reptiles <laughs> that live inside the moon and Bigfoot the and the Illuminati continues. and the cycle <laughs> continues. Hopefully you're at a point now, Michael, where you're starting to influence strange children. I've been trying to find them, but I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> the bookstore is a lot more well lit now. Right. There's not really any coffee houses anymore, right? Uh, is Cafe du Marquis still open? Yeah. I mean, that's kind of the only one. But I don't think even I don't even really think people go to coffee houses anymore. And when they do, it's now the technology that we all have. You're keeps in everybody your separated. Yeah. You're, you're in a yeah. You're in an yeah. enclosed sphere. Yeah. And so nobody even wants to, like, sit around and do stuff with each other anymore. Yeah. You gotta, gotta, gotta kind of force them. You know, like with the comics party stuff. If you say don't sit at this table unless you're making comic books, that works. Right. Right. I don't know what I was getting at. I think I've had a couple minions, but like, <laughs> it's, you, you know, I was. Like twelve or thirteen when I first met you. Is that true? Yeah, I was in like how old? Like the summer of sixth grade. Twelve or thirteen. Yeah, I'm an old dude. Like my mom was like, "Honey, they do comics drawing in Java." Right. And like that, and then you're there, and it's like everyone is smoking. And I've never seen like cool the cool <laughs> older guys. I think that makes a difference too with coffee houses. No smoking anymore. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. it does. I'm sure it does. Because there is something about. You don't yeah. have to borrow anything. Well, there's from anyone something about anymore. the artistic community, right? Like the kind of self destructive nature of smoking and drinking too much right. coffee and the idea that you're getting jacked up and so all, everything's misfiring, all the neurons and <laughs> synapses are going haywire. <laughs> and now it's just sitting coffee. It's like, you're not even, most people don't, don't even drink coffee anymore. They're drinking like sugar foam soy latte, vanilla mochaccinos. Mm -hmm. Is that true? Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's like the milk industry is skyrocketing. Making me thirsty. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you want to sh show anybody any of these uh, uh, You can. Comics? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Let's Make sure you get a great but Can you tell us, the... like, while, if, while we look at them, could you tell us, like, who did these, if you remember? If I remember, for sure. Let me see. So, they have, okay. so there's, have there's a couple the of back, them here. There's actually. childhood monsters, really, really bad things to wake up to, ways to annoy people at the drive through but I think this one is the most Royal Oak. The why crotch rocket riders suck? Yeah, that's probably... So, obviously, we would just come up with a theme, and then everybody would draw their own, own little thing about whatever the theme was. So, this first one is me. That's a... That's a In a crotch that's, rocket suit? That's, no, I mean, that's my drawing. <laughs> <laughs> you were a convert? So, yeah, so mine is obviously, during the week, I'm a system administ systems administrator, but on Thursday, I'm a very bad man. Could I get another latte? 
Which is right back to that. See, that was that era was starting. Very avant-garde. And then uh, this panel is actually drawn by my friend Joe Zadorsky, who I ended up doing a little television show with called It's a Cartoon Show, mm -hmm. where he plays Professor Z, and it's kind of he's kind of like a drunk uh, Mr. Wizard. Mm -hmm. And he still draws, but I just don't. He, I, he was an art teacher for a while. Uh, of which what, is Of what year? Uh, high high school, school art. Oh, okay. Yeah, so somehow or another that happened. I'm going to go to uh, yeah. no idea who drew this picture of just motorcycles sitting in parking meters. I always loved that down arrow. I thought that was like the best arrow. Right? Yeah. And then no idea who drew this. Uh, they're still living. We're almost to the end. And uh, I think... Oh, this is actually drawn by a guy named Dave Chow, who is now the um, one of the illustrator professors at CCS. Oh, oh, yeah. Terrific. So that's that's a Dave Chow, and then uh, I think I think that's me again. I think that's one of, uh, that's a Tenny original right there. But I think someone did, no wait no that's not me. I think that's a friend of mine named Steve who got old and then stopped being fun to hang out with. So. Calling him out. Yeah. Oh, wait. <laughs> wait! This is who it is. Now we actually know. Now we know. So it is me. That's Joe Franklin, who moved to California. Dave did the arrow that you like so much. Um, we're missing out on some... These are incorrect. What I've told, <laughs> okay. what I've told the audience is actually correct. This is wrong. <laughs> <laughs> because I can recognize Dave Chow drawings. Like, he's super, he was super amazing. Anything that you wanted, Dave could just immediately draw. So, it was, he was, like, one of the best artists to have with us. Where Matt Fizell, like, is kind of cynical man land, so it's always yeah. just a stick figure. Stick guy. Yeah, stick guy. Where you could tell Dave Chow, like, I need Wolverine wearing a ballerina costume sitting on top of a dragon eating a chocolate muffin and in like three seconds that's he what... starts drawing the horizon yeah. <laughs> right? yeah but it is amazing when people like go off to do things to become professors of illustration yeah yeah like uh dave who drew one of the pictures in there for a long time was uh like the head creative director for um like a major advertising company i'll keep their name out of it but like a major major advertising company in detroit and so from weird coffee house kids to the heads of yeah. corporations and working at giant colleges and hunting ghosts on television yeah wah, wah. <laughs> what <laughs> it's sad trombone probably, they'd probably kill to do that it's a fun job. I'm not complaining about it. I mean, they pay me to go and walk around abandoned buildings, which when I was a kid in Detroit, was I was doing anyway for free. Right. You know? But you kind of have the story that, you know, anyone, not anyone can go get a degree and do a educational thing or, you know, have an advertising job. But it's like, okay, you work in advertising. Okay, that's kind of cool. Work out of college. That's kind of cool. And then ghost hunter professionally. Like, that's kind of the one that I feel like. Normal people would, you know, yeah, I mean, jaw drop because a it's not a traditional it. job. Right. Obviously, yeah, yeah, yeah. like people yeah, like right. think it's great when it's really. I mean, it is really awesome. Again, like people pay me to go somewhere and then be on television and be in a weird location, or when I'm not on television, just fly me around the country to lecture and talk mm -hmm. about weird stuff, which I'm going to do anyway. Like I'm going to talk to someone at the bar. Or you guys, <laughs> right. anybody who's around me is going to have to hear it. But they pay me to do it, and that's, it is really actually awesome. And I think that it's just that idea of not having to wake up every day at 9 o'clock and work until mm -hmm. 5 and see the same people over and over again. That's what people... <laughs> 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 that's what people, I think, interest them the most. Not even that I get to do and talk about weird stuff, just the fact that my schedule is my own, which yeah. I think most people want. That's all yeah. they want out yeah, of life, sure. right, is to be the master of their own schedule. Yeah, definitely. Well, I think our schedule is uh, Are we almost done run out already. Are we done? <laughs> yeah. Time. Oh, wait. Well, quick. Can we do an overhead shot? I brought you guys comics for cool. uh, this table. What is this? They look yellow. They're, they're older. So these are, that's girl love for you guys. And you can cool. read all about if women are born to be alone. I think so. Uh, this is a uh, 
this uh, attack comic. It's all about um, uh, Pearl Harbor as seen through a Christian perspective. You guys Ooh. will enjoy that. Uh, finally. Finally. <laughs> um, and then I brought you guys a bunch of copies of my favorite book when I was growing up, Rom the Space Knight. Oh, yes. Whoa. So, Which one is he? Uh, th that's, this is uh, Rom right there, the last of the Space Knights. Who, Holy strangely boy. enough, uh, they're not allowed to make comics about him anymore because a toy company owns the name Rom. Uh, so, like, they can say Space Knight. They can say Space Knight, but they can't say Rom anymore, so. Oh, oh so it's called Space Knight now? Um, I think they mention him in new comics in the Marvel Universe. Like, you'll hear every now and then Space Knight. And I think that there's some kind of in Guardians of the Galaxy, you might see, like, his uh, something that looks like his suit in the background. Oh, oh, but they really? never mention it or talk about it. Kind of <laughs> a... That's a little plant for the next movie. I wish I could have been more interesting, guys. I think you were pretty interesting. I think you succeeded. How are we? And with that, thank you for joining us on Royal Oak Comics Party, Episode 3. We'll be back next week for your amusement. It's been a lot of fun. Thank you, sir, for joining us. Thanks for having me on the show. It's been a fantastic, <laughs> fantastic adventure. Yeah, for us, sure too. Hope so. Very informative and educational. Yeah. I learned a lot. Good show, guys. <laughs> okay, cut, Ben. <laughs> <laughs>